my battery is charging in the peak of the day, midday sun, it's charging at over 30 amps. My solar panel is importing 13, yet my battery is charging at over 30 amps. Why is that? Hi, I'm Phil from Phil's Camping Reviews. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This week's topic is going to be a little bit of a continuation on last week's where I introduced the use of household solar panels and the benefits for your touring vehicles like my Pajero, I've got the Jinko 440 watt household solar panel on the top of my roof here or on top of your caravan so if you haven't watched that video, I would suggest just pause this one and go check out last week's video. I've been asked, Phil, why are you recommending a Victron 100 slash 50 MPPT solar regulator on a Jinko? 440 watt solar panel outputs around 12.7 amps at around 36 volts some of you are out there confused but Phil your solar panel is producing 12.7 amps so why are you recommending a 50 amp Victron MPPT solar regulator let me try to clarify it a bit some of you is a little bit confused it's mainly to do with the MPPT solar regulators good quality MPPT solar regulator has got a huge huge benefit and I'll explain the benefits shortly but before I do I want to explain some of the specifications just basic specifications on the Victron MPPT solar regulator so hopefully you can understand a little bit more on how they work you notice I said Victron MPPT 100 slash 50 solar regulator so what does that 100 slash 50 mean what am I talking about there the first part the 100 is voltage the second part is 50 amps, hence 100 volt slash 50 amp. So what that, does that mean? So that is the maximum voltage that you can put into that solar regulator. So in other words, I could connect two of those solar panels together in series, which would double the voltage of those solar panels what they'll output which will then make it approximately 70 volts it's the maximum amount of voltages I am well well below the 100 volts obviously I've got always got the option in the future that if I ever go to install this on say my roof or heaven forbid I end up with a caravan you never know then I can safely put on another solar panel on the top which will give me then close to 900 watts so although the second figure I will have some issues with that so that MPPT solar regulator the 100 slash 50 will not be enough you will not get the maximum out of those solar panels so and this is where a lot of you are confusing and a lot of you have come back to me and saying, but Phil, those solar panels, the ratings on them are 12.7 amps. I went online and had a look and it says it's putting 12.7 amps. So you only need a small solar regulator, 20. A 20 amp is enough. You're wasting money by buying a larger one. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. Basically, I've got the Jenko 440 watt solar panel which is importing 12.7 amps into my solar regulator but my battery is charging 
in the peak of the day, midday sun, it's charging at over 30 amps. So why is that? I'm getting 30 amps and yet my solar panel is importing 13, yet my battery is charging at over 30 amps. Why is that? Why is that? Well, it's all to do with the voltages and that MPPT solar regulator have got a unique feature. It converts extra voltages into amps. What am I talking about? Okay, remember that. Converting extra voltages into amps. I've got a 36 volt solar panel on the top. But Phil, how are you charging your battery at 36 volts? Aren't you going to blow it up? Yeah, you will. Believe me, you will. You will damage that battery and it could be quite dangerous. So do be careful what you do out there, folks. That's why last week I recommended a good quality MPPT solar regulator. And as far as I'm concerned, the Victron's the most efficient. Mine is getting on 10 years old and it's still working like brand new. Now you're going to be far-fetched to find anything that's going to be still working after 10 years and still is current to today. It is exactly the same as if I walked into a shop, buy another one, that is exactly the same as the one that's in there that's almost 10 years old. I purchased it as soon as it was released. I knew I was onto a good thing there. I knew straight away when I looked at the specifications, etc. So, now, let's go into a little bit more detail. So, I got a 36 volt household solar panel that's pumping 36 volts into my solar regulator at 12.7 amps. Now remember, your batteries charge at a roundabout with lithiums 14.2, 14.4, some are seen as high as 14.6, even 14.7. Our recommendation is not to go anywhere over 14.7. Always keep that charge rate round about the ideal 14.2, 14.4. Contact your battery manufacturer and get the advice from them. So mine, I think it's about 14.4 there, but I don't know. It's been such a long time since I've set it up. It just works, guys. That's the beauty. When you set these out properly, you just use it. And you don't have to worry about it. You just use it. You don't have to muck around with this and that and oh, how much battery charge I've got left and this or is this charging or whatever. It just keeps working. Just keeps working, guys. For years, that's that set up there. It just keeps working. As long as you set it up right, correct cables, fuse it correctly, use good quality componentry. Now, you don't have to spend a heap of money to get good quality componentry, guys. There's some of the cheaper brands out there are doing a good job, such as your Kings, your kick Arts, etc. So if you're limited on budget, they're great to start off with. But just make sure you use the correct cables and I always like to go bigger the cables, upsize the cables for future proofing because to be frank guys the cables are not cheap when you're dealing with 12 volt. Especially if you've got long runs. You're going to be shocked how much money you're going to need to spend on cables. So spend a little bit more, get the heavy duty cables that will future proof you. Okay, so that's what I did when I bought cables for this, when I started setting this up. A lot of stuff that's in here, the cables in here, was inserted in a little Vitara that I had at the time before I purchased this. Since then, I have upgraded my system to this awesome Victron gear. There were very few cables I've had to replace. Very few. Very few. I hardly had to spend any more money on cabling because I invested that money years ago, <laughs> luckily, when cables were a lot cheaper and I got much larger cables. I knew the future was just gonna expand, expand, and not only that, it reduces 
enormously and chances for that wiring to catch on fire especially if you fuse it correctly because then your fuse is going to blow before that cable even gets a hint of any heat in it when you're using much larger cables. So I'm a real strong believer in, in, in doing that. Let's go back to what we are talking about before. We've got 36 volts going into your solar regulator, 12.7 amps. Now, as I mentioned before, your battery cannot charge at 36 volts. You will damage it. So it drops it down to, let's say in my example, I think it's 14.4 volts I've got set on my lithium battery charge profile. So what does that mean? It is dropping the voltage down from 36 down to 14.4. Where's the rest of the voltages going? Well, 22 volts or something thereabouts. So that extra 22 volts. The MPPT solar regulator, good quality one, and make sure it is an MPPT, so your conventional cheap PW ones, whatever they're called now, they cannot convert the extra voltages into amps. So you must be MPPT solar regulator. What the Victron MPPT solar regulator does is it converts it converts that all that energy those extra voltages into amps and then what it does it pumps those amps into your battery hence you got 12.7 or 13 in my case amps maximum coming out of my solar panel at 36 volts it's converting and that the extra extra 20 amps so that is a difference that a good quality highly efficient quality MPPT solar regulator such as the Victron will give you so you're going to get max capacity it's incredible when you think about this that Jinko solar panel only cost me $210 when I purchased it those solar regulators 300 whatever I mean, for $500, you've got a good reliable system that's going to charge your battery at over 30 amps. Now, how much do you have to spend on a 12 volt setup to get 30 amps charge rate? I think it's going to cost a bit more than that, a lot more. <laughs> so it's really good value for money going this. Now, word of advice, I mentioned before, you can series connect two of these panels together, which will give you over 70 volts. And in fact, the open voltage could be even a lot higher, could be well over 80, 90 volts. That's quite a bit of a kick. So do be very careful when you're starting to work in those sort of voltages, even the 36 volts, be very, very careful. So if you grab your high voltage solar panel and you put it on the roof of your vehicle, even if it's in the garage here, so just the stray UV lights, you'd be amazed how much voltage. I like to cover it or even better off Make all your cables first, have it all done, and back your vehicle out, put the solar panel, mount it, and then connect the cables together. So be very careful you don't end up electrocuting yourself or shorten any of those leads. It's very easy to do, especially when you're working and series connecting those high voltage together you got a lot of voltages coming out those cables. So be very careful. Uh, fuse it correctly. Okay, make sure you put a fuse. And ideally, put a switch on as well. If it's permanently mounted like this, have it wired through a switch. If you want to do some work on it, you can switch it off and then you won't have any power going into your system 
from your solar panel. So guys, that's it. Till next time, eh? Be kind to everyone, look after yourself, and any questions, ask down in the comment section. And till next time, cheers. Bye.